We are up and streaming, apparently. There is a tournament about to happen. I will go ahead and set up the screen. There we are. I will get us some fancy Kalasia music, because everyone knows we love the Kalasia music. Um, there it is now. And let's see if I can spectate. Let's see here. I will also... I think I've got myself muted. Let me unmuteify myself. Alright, so... The quick start, you will want to press the quick start. The quick start allows you to uh, start already with a couple countries instead of starting with just one country. Uh, it gets it going a little bit faster. So we, we have historically in the tournament done the quick starts to get everybody up and running pretty quick. Um, so yeah, that thing. Do, 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 do. I will get this. Let me get the stream up. All right. Always, it wouldn't be a live stream with me if I didn't fuck around with my microphone for 10 or 15 minutes at the beginning of it. But we'll, we'll hope that maybe it's working now. I swear it's not my internet. I got like massively oh, good internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just restarted the Discord now. It's okay. Yeah, all right. I blame you. All right, so we are up. All right, so the Twitch channel is uh, Legends of Kalasia, right? Yep. Okay, cool. Because uh, Nova Message. So. It is right there. There's the link. Cool. All right. And and no trying to cheat by watching the Twitch channel because like it's it's got no. a time delay on it so it doesn't work anyway. <laughs> you, you'll only hurt yourself. You're only <laughs> fighting yourself. All right, got it. Yeah. Right, let me double check if I get the settings right. It's got a 30 I'm, second time delay. I think. I'm I'm afraid yeah. I'm gonna get my my ass kicked. You know, he's a game developer. He probably has a feeling for this kind of stuff, but. Then I was thinking Chris talks said this too, so maybe I'm gonna be lucky. You know, it's it's people people misunderstand. People think that it's gonna be great, like like, oh my god, I'm going up against a game developer, the game developer's gonna kick my ass. But it, it doesn't really work like that. Game developers aren't like magical, they're not necessarily good at games. Game develop you know, it's it's like I don't know, it's like asking a, a playwright to be a good actor, right? I mean, there are playwrights that are good actors, but just because you're a good playwright doesn't make you a good actor. It just means you write plays well. And being able to build a game doesn't necessarily mean you play a game well. It, it, you probably play it better than somebody who's, you know, never played games, but you don't necessarily play well. All right, Got so we, we are playing on uh, the Zengmar map, and this is actually... Uh, this map was designed to be the most in-the-face map in the game. This is like, there's nowhere else to go. There's you, there's your enemy, and there's only four other lands in the game. One is the smaller land down to the south, which has got a big-ass castle in it. One is the larger three-territory three country to the top, which has also got a castle in it. And really, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of time wasted on this map. You jump right into it. Yeah, I see he's jumping right into it. Alright, so let's see. Um, Alright, who is green? Green is... Let's see, uh, I'll open up the me. thing. Green is Maximus. Alright, so Max is green, and Kevin from Buko Studios is, is red. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Buko Studios is... What is Bu does Buko mean coconut? Does anyone know that what, what, what buco means something in Filipino? I don't know what. I think it means coconut because their logo is a coconut. But like buco is a small indie game developer in the Philippines, and Boomzap and all of the other sort of indie game developers in Southeast Asia all kind of know each other and hang out. So uh, buco Studios decided to come join us uh, for this. Oh. And Buko Studios gets Peasant Revolted right up off the top. That's a that's a hard blow early in the game to get the Peasant Revolt on you. Yeah, that's a, it's from the new update, right? It's a, yeah, it's a neutral hero. 
Yeah, we, well, the thing was, the original peasant uh, revolt was overpowered because it didn't matter how developed your land was, it would automatically turn your land neutral and throw some enemies on it. And what was happening with the old peasant revolt card was people would wait until, like, right at the end of the game when somebody thought they'd won and then they'd throw a peasant revolt down in the middle of your country and then you would lose your country bonus and then you wouldn't win and it was it was a cheesy trick right and so we said all right well what if we made the peasant revolt into a hero and the hero does appear right on your land but he doesn't automatically make your land neutral like any other hero he's got to occupy your land and and take it over so if you've got a land that's got, say, a citadel on it, well, a citadel's got three hit points, so it's going to take you three turns to get through all of those hit points and take, and for the, the peasant army to take over the, the citadel. And that actually has worked out pretty well. If you've got a land that's really undeveloped, like the one that this peasant just got thrown on, then it'll take it over relatively quickly. Uh, but if you've yeah. actually spent some time and investment on that land, you've got a couple turns to get over there and, and deal with him. Um, so I, I've been much happier with the way that these Peasant Revolt cards work. Interesting. But it is, the, the Peasant Revolt's a powerful play early in the game, because you've got, everyone's got the, you know, later in the game the Peasant Armies are, the, the you know, because your armies are going to grow and your power is going to grow, but that Peasant, he's not going to get any better. If you throw down the Peasant Revolt at the end of the game or the beginning of the game, it's still going to be the same, you know, loser bunch of Peasants. So, in the early game, those peasants are kind of badass, but in the late game, those peasants kind of suck. So, in the late game, it's, it's much more of just sort of a distraction, and you play the card a little differently. In the early game, you play it exactly like it got played here. You play it as a spoiler to say, you know, I, I don't want you taking this land, I'm going to make you burn some more of your, your cards and some more of your gold to take this land. What it ends up doing more in the late game is it works as a as a spoiler for movement. So somebody says, like, I've got this big, huge army, and I'm about to attack your castle, and I want one more turn before you attack the castle. I can throw that peasant army down there. Yeah, those peasants aren't going to do any real damage. You get your ass kicked in a turn, but they're going to stop that guy for a turn. And so later in the game, the peasant revolts become much more of sort of a movement stifler instead of a, a spoiler like it is now. And, oh, Turnabout is fair play. A peasant revolt on Max. <laughs> it's okay, I got it. <laughs> I got it, I got it. Yeah, but you see, because it's a peasant revolt on that bigger town, he's got some more time to deal with it. Ta-da. Yeah, Rana comes with a pretty good-looking army at the beginning, so... Uh... Yeah we're, those yeah, we're still in the process of kind of balancing out the starting armies, but, you know, the the starting with a couple of the elite units is kind of fun because you, most people don't have those in the early game. It makes these small, you know, a little game like this where you've only got X number of territories, the, the, your chances and opportunities to build up to those big elite units are a lot less than on, say, a much, much bigger map. So on these smaller maps that... Uh, that elite unit starting army becomes a little bit more powerful. All right, so it looks like Zengmar is one country away from being complete. Kantia is still two countries away from being complete. But in both cases, there's a reasonably sizable neutral army in the way. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. Let's see how I'm going to tackle this one. He's going to build on both. Yeah, he was. The obvious. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how some of the other people tackle this map. It's a very different challenge because it's so fast-paced and so intense. And I wonder how many people are just going to go for the straight Zerg rush and say, screw it, I'm going right for his neck, I'm getting this over with. And how many people are going to kind of hold back, build some, build some stuff up, build some armies and see if they can defend a little bit. Yeah, Merlin and I practiced this map a bit yesterday. We found that Zerg Rush is the best tactic. Oh, really? The what? Which tactic is the best? Please do tell. <laughs> it's too late now! <laughs> <laughs> Your opportunities are over. 
Let's move. All right, you deal with that. You go build this what? No, actually, yeah, deal. All right. No. All right. Oh, Max He's brings started. out the bear. I like the bear. I, I don't know if you know this. I am the bear. Yeah, I know. Because you had it as your promo picture for a while. I yeah, well, the, the, the story goes... I've told the story a few times, but I like telling it. Um, the story goes... We were making all of these heroes, and the the original heroes, when we started making them, we didn't want to have just the same basic old, here's your knight, here's your lich, here's your, you know. We wanted to, because everything else in this game is pretty standard fantasy stuff, you know. Here's your skeletons, here's your dragons, it's pretty straightforward. But we wanted the heroes to be a little more original. And so the artists who were doing the heroes, I didn't really give them any any sort of I didn't say I didn't give them a list of heroes to make or anything I just said go make some cool concept art of some cool stuff and they came back with all of this crazy stuff there's there's about 20 concepts we never built because we just kind of ran out of we, we thought we had enough damn heroes um, yeah, there were, uh, but you know you can see there's a pretty big diversity there's the the girls who are the twins and there's the big lizard and there was the weird bird thing and there was all this stuff and I was looking at it, and I don't know why, and I was like, I want a bear. And they were like, oh, okay, like a bear, man, like a lycanthrope. No, I was like, no, a bear, just a fucking bear with like a skull around his chest on a necklace. Just a big fucking bear. And they were like, well, what does the bear do? And I was like, he's going to fucking be a bear. He, what's, bears are cool. If I can even run around and kill shit. And they... They, they didn't really like the idea very much. They were not enamored of the let's put a bear in the game. Um, but, but I'm the creative director of the studio, so they felt they had to do it. And so they put it in the game, and they named it Chris's Fucking Bear. That was its actual name for quite a while. And so for a while in the game, we had Chris's Fucking Bear, because they were also determined that the bear was not cool. And that got shortened to Curse Bear, uh, which is short for Chris's Fucking Bear. And we took this to a couple conventions, and I don't know how many people have seen the poster, because we got this big poster that we put up in the booth, and the, you know, it's got all the heroes laid out, it's got Undead, and it's got Meg, you know, the, the Fury, and all that, and it's got the bear in there, and everybody looks at the picture, and they're like, can I play the bear? And I'm like, yeah, you can play the bear. Cool, I can play the bear. And so I'm <laughs> totally vindicated on the fact that playing a big fucking bear is cool. Like, I, I win, they lose, Everyone told me the bear was not cool. Fuck you, the bear is cool. I will give them credit. They did draw a very nice bear. I'll, I'll put the bear up on screen. It is a very yeah. good-looking bear. But it's also... It has really good stats. It used yeah, to no, not. It's the, creative direct, it's the creative director's image. Yeah, no, but now it is. It's the creative director's, uh, you know, game character. So, obviously, it has to... You badass. It did. It, in earlier versions of the game, until a couple weeks ago, the bear sucked. And it pissed me off, because I always play the bear, because, you know, it's it's my fucking bear, right? I can't play the game and not have the bear. It's, I, it's me, right? I'm the bear. Um, so I was pissed off, because I had... And, and I had no one to blame but myself. I'm the one that set up all the stats. So if the bear sucked, it's my fault. So I, I went through and reorganized a few things and made sure the bear didn't suck anymore. Uh... I don't think he's overpowered though. I think I think now the heroes have really they've really evolved into choices about how you yeah. want to play, um, and yeah. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. That you there's actually a little bit of strategy at the beginning of the game to say, I think the way I'm going to play is I'm going to go out on a rush, and when I go out on a rush, I want to bring say Ridley, who's got a really good attack as long he's on land that's not his own, 
Um, or I'm going to play a really defensive game, so I'm going to play Revenant because that's got Dr. Graziano, and Graziano's got the huge defense benefit. And we, we pointedly made a lot of the benefits and, and penalties to, to things large so that you really feel it. Um, there, there is a, a real difference to bringing Ridley out for a conquering fight or bringing, say, uh, uh, Rana out for a fight. And there's a real difference between leaving Ridley at home or bringing Rana at home because Rana's got that huge benefit for extra gold. Exactly. That's why I started the uh, I started the uh, the game with with her just to get the gold boost at the beginning because I know in the beginning there's not going to be any direct conflict, um, which of course can bite me if he really does attack me very early on, but. But no, it's it's a good, it's a solid first play, but you do lose out on the ability, you know, what, what I play a lot is I play the humans, I get Ridley right up front, because Ridley's got that great attack benefit, because one of the, you know, you could look at it two ways. One, I want the gold from the land that I've got, and I want Rana to help me increase that gold. Or two, I want to, as quickly as possible, go out and kill those neutrals so that I can get some lands. And if you want to do that, you want the guy who's got the big attack yeah. bonus fighting neutral. So it's, I, I, I don't think either one is necessarily a stronger gameplay. It's a different gameplay. And that's that's really what we're, we're kind of hoping to try to do is create these opportunities for real strategic decisions. And it's it's been really wonderful uh, having this game in early access and having so many people beta test it and having so many people play it, having people... and. And doing like this, having these conversations while we play, um, has really helped us get that balance and, and, you know, people... We used to have an ability called Royalty, which gave you extra victory points, and it was just... It was just the most shit ability, and nobody liked it, it didn't play well. And yep. one of the things that's like nice that about being a little studio like us... Well, alright, we changed it. You know, I mean, the, the, the process to go from hey, we want to have this in the game to having it in the game is usually less than 24 hours. So that's, uh, that's one of the really fun things about working on a game like this at this size. It's, it's a big enough game that it's a real legit game game, but it's still, you know, it's still a six, seven person team most days. Um, ah, eight people. It's about an eight person team. And you, you, can, you can be highly mobile with, with eight people. You can make a lot of change really fast. All right, so we are getting very close to the point in the game where someone's going to have to start beating up on someone. <laughs> you're going to run yeah. out of spot. You're going to run out of room pretty quick. Yep. Yeah, this is what Merlin and I found out. The first person to get a foothold on one of the towers always won. Yeah, so I, I made it a little bit more difficult for him. I I played a. What was it? I, I reinforced that neutral army of his tower. Yeah, you um, played partisans on his tower. What yeah. Merlin and I also found is that you can actually play peasant revolt on a neutral territory and then play partisans and will actually reinforce both the peasants and the neutral garrison. Uh, army. It makes it much more difficult to capture. That, that is entirely by design, by the way. <laughs> that, was, that was intended behavior. All right, now let's see what's going to happen this turn. Are you ready, Kevin? Or are you going to run? Run, Kevin. Run. Ten right. turns remaining. Ten turns and you guys haven't fought each other yet. <laughs> we'll see how this plays out. <laughs> yeah, do you get points, like, do you get uh, VP points for... Uh, like for armies, like no, board armies no, you get victory points for heroes, and because people didn't see that before, we actually added it to the card, so you can see if you if you pull up one of the one of the hero cards, you can see it there on the hero card now. But no, you don't get victory points for armies. Okay, you get victory points for heroes, for improvements, and for land. All right. Um, that's that's your and and also of course you get the victory point bonus for having whole kingdoms. Actually, if you like the peasant revolt and you like the uh, the the tentaclore, the rarely appearing tentaclore, literally three hours ago we had an idea and added a new card to the game, and it went from 
hey, Chris has an idea to actually being playable in the game, the developer version, not the not the Steam version, uh, in, a, in about two oh, hours. Nice. Um, it is the the new... Uh, we, we changed... I can't remember what the card used to be called. Um, hang on. It used to be... It, it's still got the same name. Uh, but we changed... We, we, we radically changed how it plays. Um, it was a Feyborn wizard card. Um, yeah, Power of the Woods. Yeah, we actually just adjusted Power of the Woods. Power of the Woods is now basically a... Summon a big huge fucking tree hero that comes with a whole bunch of treants, but you can only summon him on woods and uh, forests. Uh -huh. so, so it's it's basically a treant version of the the tentaclore that can only be played on forests. Okay. But that does. But you can't play that yet. That will that will be in the next updated patch. We're gonna test it and see if we like it or not. We just put it in today. Couldn't you put some sprigs in with that army too? We could. I thought it was funny to just have it be a big fuck ton of trees. <laughs> I, I, I thought there was humor value to that. Um, but yeah, we could put some sprigs in that. That would make it. That would give it a little bit more teeth. Oh, uh, I recently got engaged. Novum is listening, so I have to do this. Novum, I love you. I hope she heard it, because I'm not saying it again. For, for the record, I have met the Novem in question, and she is an awesome human being. So, Max is a very... What, when, have you guys got a date on the wedding yet? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, but it's going to be next year, because, uh, as you know, I'm doing a startup now, and I'm quite busy, so... Um... Well, and the other so, thing is, well, I know you, Max. You're going to... You're gonna, I read the, the engagement story, which was epic. It involved elephants and hand-carved boxes, and it was uh, real live elephants. There was a real live elephant involved in their engagement. But And his name is Wi-Fi. There really was an elephant named Wi-Fi? Yes, his name was Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that whatever sort of... Uh, ceremony you guys put together is going to be huge and epic and complicated and will require time for planning because you're a big girl max no no so uh, actually it's not i can uh, um reveal this for you um it's actually not going to be uh, that exciting uh, what the, the complicated part is that my family is in holland and hers is in hong kong and we probably want to get Married on a beach in Southeast Asia. That's the complicated part. But no, uh, if we're doing something, if we are doing a ceremony, we're doing something very small. Oh, uh, okay. Because I, I had you pegged for, even if it's small. All right. Uh, granted, maybe you're going to have a small ceremony, but I bet it's going to be ludicrously complicated and have lots of tiny little details that you've obsessed about for months. Because that's the guy you are. Admit it. Hmm. <laughs> I, I withhold. I think I got this first round. I think I pretty much got it. Uh, don't count your chickens before they hatch, but I, I, I would say right now the odds are looking pretty good for you. You've definitely got the score right now. I mean, he's got a, he's got a claw back. You know, a couple hundred no, I, points in seven turns. I'm, I'm not yeah. seeing how that yeah. happens right now. Yeah, I, I know. He, yeah, he was gonna attack me, and then I just jump in with my other hero who's sitting on a on a uh, what's what's the most upgraded version of this uh, castle called? Oh, uh, that's a, the the citadel. Yeah. Yeah. So See? I'm sitting on a citadel, so I'll bring in the reinforcement, and never gonna be able to to deal with me. See, uh, but I I would actually say you misplayed that, and I'll tell you how. Um, you went ahead and tried to take over that fort, and when you try to take over a fort, that puts you in a weaker position. That actually gives you a defense modifier, a negative defense modifier. Um, you knew he was going to uh, come in and attack. I didn't. Yeah. You, you see, you, you, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you knew he was going to come in and attack. I would have put him in an active defense, which would have given you the defense bonus. Because if he didn't come in and attack, he's screwed because he can't get his points back, right? 
So you 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 shoved him in a position where he's gonna have to attack. I would have sat there and defended, so you would have done a lot more damage when he did come in. I think you're gonna be yeah. all right anyway. But I didn't know I would I would get a negative bonus for taking something over and then getting attacked. I didn't know that. There's, we're actually, right now, we're in the process of putting together a second stage tutorial so that, so that you have the tutorial that you've got right now, and then we'll have an advanced tutorial. And we're going to talk about some of those things like defense bonuses and stuff in the tutorial because I, I think most people don't know that. And it's actually, if you do know that, gives you huge advantages in the game because you, you, you think about stuff like, oh, okay, if I defend... And you can see, if I click on the territory, you can see there's a, a defense modifier for the territory. You can also see for your character, um, if you click on your hero, you can see what their current defense modifier is. Because you're sitting yeah. on a fortress right now, you've got a plus 60 defense. Now, if you were to press the, the, the shield button, the little defend button, um, you get a further, I think, plus 50% for being actively defending, which puts you up to like 110 uh, defense bonus. That's basically doubling the size of your army in some sense. Um, That's nice. Yeah, it's there's a lot of stuff like that that where the game is a little deeper than it originally appears. That I I fear we're not expressing fully and properly. Um, oh, and you said something. The larger army moves first, or the smaller army moves first. Another thing okay. that's going to be in the advanced tutorial. Okay, great. So good to know. Okay, well, uh, I'm sitting on this castle now. Yeah, so... th that's it. This is over. <laughs> um, like round one goes to you, I think. Um, Alright. Yeah, I'm going to take three turns. Just... Exactly in the last turn, I will eliminate him. Yeah, this this one's over. Um, by the way, Kevin, out. there is a there is a surrender button, Kevin. <laughs> if you'd like to, if you'd like to uh, put this put this out of its misery, you can go ahead and do that. It's yeah. in the settings menu. Um, but failing that, right. we, we'll sit and watch Max slowly take your castle over. Because um, you can't... All right. Uh, all right. Bang on that end turn button. All right. Uh, I want to move <laughs> vault here. Just for fun. I'm sitting on a pile of gold, too. Oh, stop building things and just press the end turn button. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, not, I was pressing for vaulting him. Like... That's just... That's just crass. That, that's not nice. <laughs> Just hit the surrender button. <laughs> there we go. Ta-da! Ah, oh, there we go. Um, you have enough victory points to win, and you won through conquest. So that's it. That's that's uh, that's round one. I will. Yeah. For the moment, Twice. I will. I will make our image be the uh, the cool slideshow. Um, I really had like a lot of fun learning OBS and all the. There's there's so much to know about streaming. I had no idea. Um. Let's see. I'll even put some text here. Tournament. Random uh, begins. Uh, post the game. All right. Oh. Play. Oh. I think we may have gotten the spectate crash out of the game too. We used to have a crash when you spectated. Hey, we fixed the we fixed the fact that everyone used to get a crown. Now we actually only have one guy that gets a crown, so that's nice. The winner gets the crown. All right. So, Invite him again. Wait, he went offline. No, he's here. Refresh. I can I can invitation message him. I can send him an invitation message. Only Legend Bacon, Colgan, and Base Cap are in there. Her. Huh, I see him. Weird. So I, I keep... Yeah, like, I'm hosting the game. Oh, maybe he's hosting a game. Yeah, why don't you, why don't you join and see if he's already hosting? No, he's available. Oh, there he is. He's there. No, 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 no. Alright, host the game. Zemmar. Uh, he's still not on the voice channel, but I, I I'll say if he wants to take the position I just had. Then... Well, you're supposed to. The rules of the tournament are now you got the swap. Now you have to swap positions. Them's the rules. So All round right. one, you do one position each. Round two, you swap positions, and then if there's a round three, you set it to random position. 
Got it. All right. I got to hold the stats right. Quick start has to be on. I will take position. How do I change the position? Click on the number and change the number to the other number. Yeah, but we're already both assigned, so we cannot swap. There you go. Oh, again. Yeah. yeah. Actually, in a in a larger game, let's say this was like an eight-player game, and let's say three of you all wanted position one, you could all set position one, and the game will say, all right, everyone gets the position they wanted except for the guys who wanted position one. One of them will get position one, and then the other two will get whatever's left. So it'll, you can actually randomly fight for the position if you want it. It does the same thing for colors if you're feeling petty and you really, really want to be a color that somebody else wants to be. If four people say they want to be blue, then one of them will be blue and the other ones will get randomly assigned colors. Yeah, you, you know what you get in return for that? You're going to be pink. <laughs> for being petty. Alright. Well, in that case, you know what? I like green. Good. Okay, ready? Go. No, he's not ready. Yes, he is. Here we go. Round two. All right, cool. I can spectate now. Let the spectating begin. Begin spectating. Ooh. Tough. One tough cookie. Uh... All right. Ugh. Okay, ceasefire. Yes, Kevin, I have a ceasefire if you're listening. <laughs> Just so you know, once we start clashing, I'm going to check it. Yeah, I hadn't noticed, but Merlin mentioned. Now there, it's gotten to where there's some cards where you're like, yeah, I'm going to hang on to that card. Like, And that's what exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to be where you, you were hanging on to some of those cards and saying, ah, all right, I'll, I'll, I have a plan for that later. That, that means your cards are cool. So the initial yep. layout of the map looks pretty fair. Doesn't look like anyone got substantially worse deal than the other. Um, well, the crowd I have at, what is it, white gear with is pretty annoying. I love that the spectator can still click on the little birds and stuff. That's nice. Gives you something to do. What are we gonna do? I think this time he's going to be a lot better because I, 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 what he told me he hasn't really played the game yet, and I think he will. Well, yes and no. Make it. Actually, they they came. We showed this game all the way back in oh shit October at a game convention in the Philippines. You know that uh, I forget the name of it. It's the 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 one that. Uh, It's the one with the esports. Come on, you used to run conventions. Which one is that? The Philippine convention that's got the big esports thing that happens in October. Uh, of all people, you should have known the answer to that question. But anyway, there, there, I, ah, right. ESGS, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, we showed this game at ESGS. Uh, got a really nice booth there. It was a really nice show, actually. And uh, Buko was also at that show they also had a really nice booth uh, with more games than us um, and uh, Buko has both Kevin and his his wife in it who's also a very nice person um, and they came by and they were playing the game and um, more Kevin's wife than Kevin really got into the game we actually I, I think Kevin's wife probably spent about three or four hours of that convention uh, playing this game on the iPad uh, so, so she was really into it. Kevin came by and played it some too. So I think she, she would be kicking your ass even more. Um, we'll see. I, I think All Kevin, right. 
the, the thing is, I don't think either one of them have played it much since last year. Uh, they've been busy being game developers and whatnot, so they're having to learn all the new rules and, and new changes. I mean, this game is already a completely different game than it was uh, in March, to be quite honest. Uh, if you're if you're looking at game balance and units uh, and strategy, what what happens if I play a peasant revolt on a neutral territory that ha already has an army? It will be stuck. Yeah, it will become friends with that neutral army, and they will become a stronger neutral army. Okay. So there will be a hero full of whatever, it'll be a hero full of peasants and a neutral army on that land. And that is, in fact, a nasty and terrible thing to do. But it's planned. We, we wanted it to be that you could do that. Because we wanted to make... We wanted to create some gameplay with the neutrals where the neutrals weren't just, yeah, let's eat some time at the beginning of the game, but where you could actually, you know, screw around with them and say, oh, I can I can put this here and make these neutrals bigger or... Make these neutrals stronger. How is stronger. this possible? Casualties zero and zero on both sides. It happens. Uh, in especially when you're when when one of them's like a really big guy, like a dragon or something like that. That happens uh, quite a uh, lot. Okay. What it means is the the army that you're bringing. So the the way that the the uh, the preview works is we're basically rolling the dice once and saying that's one die roll. And then when you actually attack, we're going to roll the dice again and you're going to get a second dice roll. And if you roll poorly with a bunch of units attacking a, a small number of units with large hit points, like a dragon, um, sometimes you will roll that, uh, yeah, you didn't do enough hit points to kill him in the first round of combat. It happens. Okay. Alright. What's this farming? How's this battle fair in here? It's pretty good. Dude. Yeah, he's... I feel like we should have a subdue peasants card. We should have like a... Like a, like a, like a just a card you can throw down on the peasant revolt and be like, yeah, all right, you, you're not... You're not revolting anymore. Screw you. Like that would be, that would be a spoiler to a spoiler, which would be fun. People would be like, "Yeah, fuck you, no. peasant revolt." And you'd be like, "Yeah, fuck no. you, no peasants." Okay, you can do it after the tournament. For now I'm, uh, I'm enjoying. If I if I if I also fortify that peasant army, right? Uh, that uh, revolting army. There's you no certain you there is nothing stopping you from throwing a fortified card on that peasant army. If you were to click on that land, you would see that that yeah, tower is now giving them a 60% defense bonus, right? So if you yeah. click on the peasant army, you can see because the peasant army is actively defending and because they're sitting on a tower, that peasant army already has an 85% uh sure, defense how, bonus. How big does the defense bonus increase if I if I fortify it? How much does it increase? Um, I don't remember. I think it's like 25%. It's it's a sizable amount. It's it's enough that it might be a fun thing to do. Uh, I, 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 yeah, as I figured, as you can see, like, he knows that army is too big to beat right now, so... But, I mean, there's the other side of it, which is, you did just build a big, huge fortress in the middle of Canthia, so later on, when he has taken it, he will get a fortress out of the deal. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's why I'm not fortifying it. But I know that that, peasant, uh, that revolting army that's there right now. That's already enough to keep him at bay for for the time being. But a fortress would delay him a lot longer. He'd if, suffer more casualties. No, because he's going to. He is. He is going. To, he is going to uh, reinforce his armies before he even sets foot there. Anyway, so. But it is, I mean, to be fair, this is a relatively small map, and it's a small number of turns. So, on a 30-turn game with this many territories and only four kingdoms, and those kingdoms are where the victory points are coming from, delaying him from getting his kingdom for another uh, two or three turns is a, it's, it's a meaningful wound to him. I don't know, there's, uh. there's, there's pros and cons. I don't, I don't know what the right course of action is. Now, if I had a if I had a fortify card, and 
a, uh, a partisan's card, you could really fuck with his life with that. <laughs> you could really make him miserable with that combination. Yeah. I'm gonna make him miserable anyway. He's gonna get lost. He's not playing a lot of cards, though. I mean, if he, he's just hoarding them. Uh, maybe he's getting bad cards. All right, Erica added to the game. Oh, wait. Whoa, he's, he is attacking the that army. Rick. I wonder. I mean, the peasants do have a big defense bonus, but they're still peasants. They still do suck. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> I need to think. Oh, what am I? Which way am I gonna go? I'm wondering if he's gonna win from that peasant army. Because he just threw some guards on it, which don't do a lot of damage, so. Yeah. Hope he loses. Historically, with the kind of numbers those peasants probably have and the kind of numbers he probably has which I won't which I won't tell you actually I'm gonna stop that sentence there I don't want to give you extra yeah information. you should yeah I'm yeah, not, yeah. I'm not gonna give you that information who knows what will happen in what is that land called in blue talon wood the mysteries of blue talon wood will be left undiscovered for the purposes of commentating I have to play to do the same trick again. Ugh. I like the new update, uh, Chris. Feels it's it feels way better than uh, than the uh, first version I played. Well, I mean, it, the first version really had a lot of balance issues, but that that's that's what early versions have. Um, and I, I think we've come a long way. I, we've still got probably two more rounds of tuning before we, we actually really launch launch. And we, we've got one round of tuning that we're working on right now um, that we'll probably have up uh, Monday-ish and then one last round uh, before we ship. But yeah, we're really live, honest to God, shipping this game next Friday. I'm kind of scared of that, but it looks pretty good. I feel pretty good about it. If we were a more professional studio, we would be entirely locked down and adding nothing and changing nothing and only fixing the smallest of bugs, but uh, I can tell you factually, that's not happening right now. <laughs> we still are adding things and changing things and major features. It's, it's amazing what we're choosing to do nine days before we launch this game. It's absolutely shocking. I'm sure there's a book somewhere that says we're totally not supposed to develop like that, but... I've developed like that my whole life. I'm not scared of it. Oh, you got it. You got the fortification. Crap. Now I gotta scramble if I wanna get way behind on him.
Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, it's gonna be tough. fortification and now he's gonna make my life a living hell. Pretty sure of that. So it looks like Kevin's in the lead this time. He's got a full country sorted out. A little bit ahead of you. Yep. But there's still there's still plenty of rounds left in this. There's still a good solid 13 rounds of this game left. Yeah, but he's got the fortification. He's just gonna and the second hero is making his way down there. I'm gonna have trouble acquiring that fortification uh, that the fortification over there I just cleared it but he's just gonna jump in and prevent me from taking it I should have done this differently I shouldn't have moved up north just to get that land. I should have gotten that fortification first. I fear the bear. Yeah, so he upgraded that tower to a fortress. He's got a reasonably good army in it. Yeah, it's not looking good. So, he's going to attack me or not? Nope. It's all a mystery what will become. Yeah, I'm screwed, man. Oh, it's gonna be fun, though. That means that the last round is gonna be the decisive one. Ah, oh, I should have conquered it. Oh. oh, boy. Ass whooping. So he's got a big ass citadel down there now, which is I'm trying to remember what a citadel's worth. A citadel's worth a good number of victory points all by itself. That's a solid 15 victory points all on its lonesomes. What's a tower worth? Five? Yeah. 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 I lost this round. Sure. Oh man. I don't know. Action. You still got you still got ten turns. There's still things that could happen. Things. Yes. Ten turns remaining. Uh, 
There's so many things I did wrong here. That's the that is the stressful part of these little short games, is in thirty turns if you fuck up five turns you yeah you lost like that's that's the hardest bit like if you make a mistake it usually takes you two or three solid turns to sort of clean up your mistake and move everyone back where you want by the time you're done that's a that's four or five turns gone that's a that's a solid hunk of your game right there. Yep. And I'm feeling that right now. <clears throat> Why does he not attack me? What the crap? He doesn't attack you for the same reason you did. But he's in the position you are in the last round. Basically, unless you attack him, you've lost. And he's got this big, huge army sitting on that nice, big, happy defense bonus citadel. He's got the the orcish city on the top defending him. There's only there's only one way in, and he's got it as guarded as he can get it. Un unless you go down there and take it from him right now, he's got the points. Yep. So let's see if I can. I'm not so sure. See, it used to be that defending, and this is, I think, one of the one of the the drawbacks that you have because you were playing the earlier version of the game. The earlier version of the game, defending was a was a fool's errand. If you defended, you just got your ass kicked. Um, garrisoning used to be pointless, like leaving troops alone without a hero, that used to be the stupidest thing you could do. But now, those are, those are valid gameplay strategies. You can garrison up something and, and expect maybe it would survive. If you do stay on the land and defend, you do get bonuses. It used to be that defending was totally useless, but now defending actually has purpose, which is, which is nice. I'm, I'm happy that there's more strategic options now. Wondering how big his army is. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm not going to give you that information. Those ballistas, though. Yeah, they're pretty nasty, but they, uh, they're squishy. You gotta bring something with them. You can't just bring the ballistas or you'll get, you'll get them all destroyed. You gotta bring some, something with some, some crust to it. You gotta bring some guards or some dragons.
Yep. There he comes. There he comes. Oh man. Oh yeah, you see, he was like pointing out this card. Oh boy. Ooh, and he hit you with the Siege Machinery card. The You Don't Get it? Defensive Bonuses card. Ouch! That's gonna sting. Oh, this is gonna be oh, interesting. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, But here, for the for the purposes of, of of explanation, I would argue he has made a tactical error here. I'll, I'll he should have just defended. He should just just have defended, right? No, that's actually. I I think at this point in the game, attacking may have been a valid strategy. But if I had attacked, what I would have done is I would have moved all of my here. He's got. Let's see, who did he bring with him? He brought Ridley. He brought. Uh, Let's see, who's here? He brought Ridley, he brought Erica, and he brought Greg, right? If you look at Greg, he's not adding much to this attack. He's basically a builder, right? He doesn't... He's not He's not helping much. He is, he is providing extra stacks, which might be useful. But he brought Erica along, and bringing Erica along, I think, was a critical mistake. Because if he had left Erica... He could have dumped all of Erica's troops off of Erica, left Erica behind, and... Right now, on the next turn, while everybody's engaged in battle, Erica could have used the population limit that was freed up from the units that got killed in the last combat, built more units on that citadel at a cheap price, because she gets to buy cheap units, and brought those up for a second wave of reinforcements. If she'd left Greg behind too, that would have actually been two rounds of reinforcements that could have been brought in, each round using the population limit that was freed up in the last round to build more units to bring over. Because both of you guys are probably, I'm not sure, but you guys are probably both population bound right now, right? No, I'm at 45 out of 184. It's got me. I think I'm going to hit the surrender card. The surrender. Ah, oh, you're not gonna not gonna give him the joy of killing you fully just to just to. But yeah, I, that's a that's a trick that that, that the, the more advanced players learned is there is a lot of value to swapping your armies around, making sure you're putting all of your armies on the guy who's gonna give the best attack. Because um, here again, if you look at the if you look at the makeup of the units, I've got I've got these griffins and this dragon on Erica, right? Erica doesn't get any attack modifiers, but if I look at uh, Ridley here. Ridley gets a plus 50 attack when he's fighting on neutral or enemy territory, which is what you're, what's happening right now. So if those griffins had been pushed over to Ridley instead of staying on Erica, that would have been like having twice as many of those griffins. And this is why Merlin wins, right? I can think of this stuff right now because I'm not playing and there's no pressure on me and there's no stress. Like, it's really easy to be the backseat driver in this game. But when there's that little timer at the top and it's telling you, you know, you need to, you need to hurry up and finish your move, I forget to do shit like that all the time. And it's people who can kind of keep their cool and keep all that math in their head. Those are the people that win this game. Which is good. That's what strategy yeah. games should be about. I'm, I'm happy that that's the case. I'm happy that I lose to Merlin because I think Merlin is a better strategy gamer. And if I were winning against Merlin, who I believe is a better gamer than me, then I would say my game is not not cool, right? You want a game to allow the better gamer to win. And I'm, I'm happy that that happens regularly. But we're also seeing that people are learning, and that's what's kind of fun, is we're seeing people get better over time, and people who've played the game more do get better. And again, that's something that you want to see in a good game. If, if somebody's been playing the game for a year, and somebody's been playing the game for a day, and the guy who's been playing for a day wins, it's... Uh, Maybe not such a great game. Oh, those cards, man. It's so common. All the damage. Uh, yep, okay. Time to surrender. Yeah, I think he's got this one. There's only two more turns left. I, I see very little that could happen in this game that would let you win at this point. 
Actually, he's not that much ahead in uh, VP points, though. No, I mean, because you've got two countries. Both countries, both both of the kingdoms are worth 120 points. So there you guys Wait, are, that, are, that are one even. That on the left is, is a whole country? Is a whole kingdom? Which one? No, I only have one kingdom, right? Well, okay, you guys each have one kingdom. You have one extra territory, right? But he's got way better buildings than you do, and each one of those buildings is giving him a lot of EP. Mm. So he's got this town... Uh, the town of North Bronze Hills is worth 15. Uh, the Frogwick town is worth 15. Oyster Coast is worth 15. Um, the whole, the whole, uh, the the country of the territory of East Taganthor is only worth what uh, 10, I think. That's oh, worth 15. That's worth 15 because it's got the village on it. I mean the hamlet on it. It's one and one. The oh, Philippines wow. oh, coming a, back. There is a big delay in this. All right. So it looks like game three for the for the. So on game three, everything is set up exactly the same, except the uh, uh, randomize the the starting territory. Okay. okay. And while you guys do that, I'm gonna go make myself a new emblem. I haven't made a new emblem in a while. I like to, I like to change them out every now and then. I like to keep it keep it fresh. Yeah, I'll be a moose for a while. I don't like the moose. Actually, Kevin, we should get the Buko coconut in here. We should just just the support Southeast Asian game development. We should get like the logos of some of our other game studios in here, so that you can play as Buko Studios. That'd be cool. I think I'll, I think I'll be this dragon. He's kind of cool. Let's see. I'll change my bar to a bar sinister. I happen to know that's what that's called. All right, final round. Chris, I'm nervous. Yeah, I like my new logo. That's kind of sexy. All right, let's go watch this game. See if it's all set up. Join. There we go. I'm almost ready to spectate. Almost. Soon we can spectate. Yeah, I, I hit. I think he's uh, grabbing a drink or something because he's not clicking ready. Palm trees, kind of buko, but I mean, I, I, I think we should, I think we should support our Southeast Asian game developer, indie game developer friends. I should go around and like get the logos of other indie game developers, get their, get the, just Southeast Asian ones. You keep it Southeast Asian to be all like, you know, support the home team. Get their logos, make a little logo version. Ask them if they don't mind if we put that in, and then you know. People who want to support Southeast Asian game development can play as the Buko Coconut, or I don't know what other. What you could play as the the Altitude Llama, I guess. That that's that's another. Let's see, what's their logo look like? The Inzen, the Inzen Unicorn. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, the Inzen Unicorn. Yeah. Uh, the Witching Hour. They've got their little timepiece. There's the Witching Hour timepiece. Yeah. They could play as that. Um, what does what, Joy what, Entertainment have? What? What, did, what? what is Joy Entertainment's logo like? Check. I'm not sure. Check. What? What? What is? What's Gerald Studio called? That's Inzen, right? Inzen Studio. Yeah, that's Inzen. Yeah, yeah. Joy. Yeah, no, I'm getting I'm Inzen, Inzen confused with what's? There's a sound studio in Singapore. What? What is? What's the name of that one? I got that confused with Inzen. Sound Studio. Yeah, there's a sound company that all the Singap that all the Southeast Asian Jews that's run out of Singapore. Don't know it. 
Joy Entertainment has a uh, a five-sided, no, a six-sided smiley face as a logo. It works as well. See, I think we should get them all in. I think we should we should bit by bit we should we should get all of the Southeast Asian Game Studio logos in so that they can all be represented fully. <laughs> Buko uh, said to mention this report. Woo! Getting sweaty here. Five minute break. Be right back. <laughs> yes, I got him sweating, Chris. You got him. You got him on the ropes. <laughs> you got him on the ropes. You know what? What is? What is the likely likelihood that he uh, had his wife play the second round? Um. Or his wife is like sitting next to him, like giving him suggestions. I'm not. I'm not going to venture an opinion on that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> leave, leave that unspoken. But I don't believe. I don't believe we have any tournament rules that say you can't get some advice from people in the room with you. I believe that's been done before. Yes. Here we go. Loading. Okay. All right, spectating up. Spectate. All right, off we go. This is it. This is for all the marbles. Winner takes all. Who got what position? Looks like Max is on the west in Canthia again. Buko Studios is on the east in Zengmar. Yeah, I'm not sure what Buko is working on now. I played when I was in uh, Manila last time at that convention. They had a pretty cool. It was like a, I want to say a. I don't know what you call it. It was like a one of those games where it's like a top-down space fighter shooter game. Like you're you're shooting. St it was pretty cool. I was I went over and I I couldn't stay very long because I had to go run my booth. But I was I was kind of into it. It was at the time it was a little bit uh, challenging. But I think it was designed to be challenging. I think it was supposed to be old school challenging. I, I think those kind of games do well like that. All right, so we've had two games. Canthia has won both games. Zangmar has not won a game yet. So that is a good question. I wonder what... So, so Colgan, when you were playing, did, did Zangmar ever win? Uh, maybe we lost Colgan. I don't know if he's there or not. I think we've lost him. We've lost him, Jim. Yes. What are we going to do? Oh, no. Keep it together, man. Keep it together. Building towns is what I'm going to do. All right, so the game has begun with some furious town building. Of course. The AI, AI troops are too strong to attack. If I play uh, Peasant Revolt, if his hero... Oh no, when his hero is there, I cannot play Peasant Revolt on him, right? Yeah, you can play on a hero. The only place you can't play a Peasant Revolt is on a city. You can play it on any, any other improvement, you can play it on any hero. You cannot play a Peasant Revolt on a city or on a battle. And the reason oh. the reason we said you couldn't play it on a city is when we first introduced this card under this sort of model, we had a bunch of people who would just like, if you got that Peasant Revolt card early in the game, you just threw it right on the other guy's city, and they couldn't even summon a hero. That, or, or what you would do is you would go find this hero, and it didn't matter what happened, you'd do whatever it took to kill his hero, and then the second you killed his hero, you threw a peasant revolt on his town. And now, because there's a hero on his city, he can't summon another hero, and you lose the game. And we thought that was a cheap exploit, so we fixed it by saying you can't play a peasant revolt on a city. Mm. I think I have a fair start here.
Now, I don't see any clear advantage on either side yet, but I'm not going to talk about that in too much detail. You don't always have to reply to anything to say. Just talk to myself. <laughs> Now, this is always kind of a sad part of game development for me, is this last couple weeks before you ship the game. Because you do have to pull back. You have to start saying to yourself, yeah, you can't add any more big stuff anymore. This you got, is good enough. You got, we gotta go with this. And you're always gonna look at your game and say like, oh, we could do this, we could add this, wouldn't it be cool to do this, we should try this. And if you let yourself, you could, you could, you could do that for years. Um, but you just have to, at some point, you have to look at it and say, alright, we're gonna ship this, and then we're gonna do some patches and things after we ship. Um, you know, we're gonna do some, some add-on packs or some downloadable content or something. But, at some point, you have to admit to yourself, this is the game. And, and when we go into, you know, once we ship the game, I don't think we're gonna be doing a big, huge weekly update. I think we're gonna tone that down a little bit, because I... I don't think the users want all their data fucked with every week. I think they're going to get pissy if we do that to them. But I think we'll probably move to a two-week update cycle where we're, we're giving them a new update every two weeks. Because once you've shipped it and it's officially a real game, we have to start, you know, seriously QAing our updates more than we're doing right now. So we'll move back to a two-week, maybe even three-week uh update cycle so that we have some time to build and to test and but largely we have to kind of start saying you know this is our game this is this is what we're gonna ship and I'm still seeing all kinds of things that I, I wish we could do this or do that and you can't you just have to say alright we're done clean it up fix the bugs and it's always a little bit bittersweet there was a I don't know if you guys have ever seen this show. It's one of my favorite things on the internet. There's a YouTube series called Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Have you ever seen this? Uh, I, I've seen that the the one episode with Barack Obama. All right, I, di I didn't see that one. Um, but you know, the, the 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 idea of the show is Jerry Seinfeld is talking to comedians about being a comedian. He's talking about the industry. And, you know, we're not comedians, but I think all entertainment industry shares a lot of sort of basic rules and basic things, whether you're working in movies or film or games or music or whatever. There, there's a lot about entertainment that's shared about the business model and how it works. And Seinfeld was going off about, in Hollywood, Hollywood is not about movies. Hollywood is about meetings and people go to meetings and they say oh I had this great meeting and everybody's excited at the meeting and the thing that you're going to build is never going to be better than it was at the meeting at the meeting where you talked about it that was as good as that idea was ever going to be because once you have the idea the, in your in your mind the idea is perfect it's everything's great here's all this stuff that you're gonna do but in the implementation of it in the day-to-day -day grind of decision making and I need to do this thing before I do this thing and I oh, I wanted to make it play like this but that created this problem so I created this fix for it but that fix created this other problem in that that world of constant change and adjustment and compromise and how much can we pay for this and how many of these assets can we make and we can't do that again or we thought this was going to be fun and it wasn't in all of that your idea gradually over time grinds down from this perfect idea that you had in your head of how amazing it was going to be to the reality of what it actually is and mm. it's actually 
kind of a sad process. It's it's actually kind of because in your mind you still see the vision of this thing that was gonna be so good, and you yeah. know what? It never will be that good. Well, that was depressing. Now that I said it all out loud, I'm kind of down now. <laughs> nah. But the, the good thing is, you have these days, what you couldn't do back in the day, I guess, is you can still make updates. Like, back in the day, it was like, to send out the floppy disk or the... Oh, the, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, back, the first game I shipped, was, I shipped on done, a, right? I think, a 15, five and a quarter inch floppy disks. And you sent that out, and that was it. You didn't yeah. see him again until the sequel. That was, that, there's your game. Enjoy it. There's the, if there's something fucked up in it, well... That's how it is. There's something fucked up in it. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was a very different world back then. Huh. Right. I think I'm uh, doing good. Got my kingdom. Got my kingdom. Got my kingdom. You. Oh wait. No, I don't. I don't spend a lot of time. Like, I, as a business guy, I probably, you know, most most. If I look at Gabby or other people like that, people who are real serious entrepreneurs, they spend a lot of time reading business books about business and you know how to uh -huh. be businessy. I almost never read that kind of stuff. I do spend a lot of time researching other entertainers and and how other entertainers think and do. I read biographies and I read the blogs and, and things of, of entertainers that I like. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from it. You're the creative director, right? Well, I'm also the business director, such as such is the world of small studios. Um, but for me, I think, I think businesses in games or in other entertainments, you, you can get caught up in the business side of it, and if you lose sight of the creative bit, it doesn't matter how many metrics you put in your game. It doesn't matter how many you know. It doesn't matter how many business things you get right. If the game ain't fun, you can't win. You can't. There's no getting. You know, even games that you may not like, even games that you say like, why is this shit? Like, like what was that one? Um, oh, do you remember this one, Max? It was that fucking pirate game, uh, Pirate Kings? That's the one. You ever play Pirate Kings? Nope, I haven't. So. If you ever get the chance, don't. It's uh, basically the game is there's a fucking wheel and you spin the wheel and the wheel gives you coins, and that's it. That's like most of the gameplay right there. And what you use, what you do with the coins is you use the coins to buy little things for your pirate island, and you build up your little pirate island, and then other people can discover your little pirate island, and they can destroy things on your pirate island and take your gold. And that's it. I'm done. That's the that's literally the whole game. And it's dead simple, very clean. The the graphics and art are well done. They're not bad. But it's a shit game. I mean, I'm sorry, it's just a shit game. In, in terms of like fun gameplay and things that I want to do as a gamer, it sucks. But as a product as a thing that somebody sat down and said, I'm going to build this thing and it's going to follow these rules and it's going to do this thing and it's going to... It was very well done and it was very well designed. And I, I have to give the studio that made it credit for having come up with an interesting idea and implemented it and, and, and done it very well. But if they hadn't done it very well, that business case for this is a really good game and this is how the metrics are going to work and this is how the paywall is going to work and this is how the, the monetization is going to work, all of that shit would mean nothing if it weren't for the fact that the game were, for the audience it was designed for, a very good game. And I may hate it and I may think it's a shit game in terms of what I want from a game, but it was very well done. And there are a hundred games like it that weren't as well done, that did exactly the same business case, went through the exact same business channels, did the exact same marketing, exact same advertising, and they failed miserably. Uh, and there is that bit in entertainment that it doesn't matter what else you do, the entertainment's got to be good. So, so far, 
Kuntia looks like a strong position. It looks like Green's got the uh, got the upper hand in this game at the moment. I'd like to hear that. Well, I mean, just just in the score, I'm not I'm not making any reflection on the unit numbers, but in the score and the number of uh, you know, Green's got the cast got the kingdom are all put together. Got a citadel sitting on the one clear way in. It's a it's a strategically pretty strong position, and that that's happened a couple times. So, and I'm looking at I'm trying to see why, because it's it's two steps to that citadel from your castle, and it's two steps to that point on Oyster Sound from his castle. And I just I wonder if maybe the the strong move is to get in and take that. Make sure that you've got that tower early on in the game. Maybe that's a maybe that's a strong move. Ooh, and a little maybe. salt in the wound with the the peasant revolt. Yeah, I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, that's not that's not kind of you. That is not a kind move. Shall we do? Yeah, he went up and took that one part of Taganthor early on, and has been had Greg up there building on it ever since to get extra victory points for the town and extra population. But I I worry that was maybe a slip up because it kept him from taking the rest of his country early. It might have been better to try to do that as a as a later stage, and not right up front. There he comes. There he comes. He's got some good cards. Got reinforcements. Let's see how this plays out. So the question is, are you population bound right now? Because you should be. Looking at the unit numbers, you should be about population bound. In which case, I might not have brought those reinforcements in yet. No, I take it back. I take it back. That was probably the smart play. Bringing the reinforcements in was probably the smart play. Because that's... I don't want him to take it over. Yeah, because you get... If you brought him in now, you get the defensive bonus on him now, which is probably a better play. So I think maybe you did the right thing there. Maybe. I do think he has lost that hero. Yes, run. Why, why do you play charge and you try to run for me? Charge is kind of misnamed because it, people see it and they think like it only ever works on the first round, but it does actually, I think, work on other rounds. I need to check that card. It's a, people get confused by the charge card a little bit. All right. All right, 10 going, turns left. I'm going, for, I'm going in for the kill, Chris. I'm coming for you. Yeah. I know that's not a very strategic thing to say, but prove it. No, I, 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 I'm not going to comment on the strategic wisdom of attacking now or not attacking. Uh, and no, I was definitely not population bound. All right. Yeah. Relax, guys. We got this. Ugh. Run, Kevin, run. Chris, I'm into two, round two. Woo. Yeah, it looks, it's beginning to look that way. But I, I, I agree, Colgan. It looks very much to me like, like that. If you're not getting in and grabbing that tower right up front, you're you're probably making a strategic error on this map. Uh, is the second round going to be the same map again, or nope? Round every that's every round of this will be a brand new map. That's the last tournament we played the same map for every round, and it was fun. But I I thought it would achieve two goals. One, it would be kind of more interesting and, and more fun to change up the map every round, and then two, it also gets me better testing on my maps. 
So I could get more maps tested if we did it that way. This map uh, has a stamp of approval. I like it. But we will never, because of the, you guys uh, made the turn limitation 30, we immediately go for each other. Although we will never go for those cities, you know, they, it's too expensive to... Yeah, in a 30 to, turn uh, game, I don't, think, I don't think going for either one of those cities is ever going to make sense, which means this map has basically got one way through. Um, because I could have done it. Instead, I went to conquer his uh, his uh, citadel, right? Mm. Um, on on this on his side, I could have also gone for the for his uh, castle, but I knew he would have been able to regroup. So, and I know it would have cost me a, a bit. So, you see, on that sense, I do disagree with Colgan a little bit. I think Kanthia might have a slightly uh, better position. Because that that citadel that's built that used to be a tower directly faces one of the two cities. So in a longer game, you would build up that citadel and you would have a much better position for attacking that city. Where if you're Zengmar, see, I'm I'm halfway thinking to maybe correct this map by having a, a sea lane that goes from uh, I don't know what the hell is that little point called that oyster sound point. Um, West Lead Hill. Yeah, West West Lead Hill. I might actually have a a, a sea lane that goes from West Lead Hill over to Degantor, so that they so that I have a, a a direct route to a castle from my strong defensive point. That might actually even up this map a little bit for a longer game. Yeah. Shits and giggles. Alright, well, it looks... I don't see any way that Buko wins this at this point. Um, this, the, you're really just you're summoning heroes? Really, you're, ju you're just that mean? You're just gonna rub it in that much? Um, Alright, it looks to me like this is pretty much over. Looks like Max has got it. Um... Unless he does something incredibly stupid, <laughs> I think this is all done. Oh, wait, I can do that. I, I, I can do something stupid. That would be fun. Alright. Let's go kill that. Thank you, Chris, for the, uh, for the suggestion. <laughs> oh, well, like, at least he got one last peasant revolt in on you. You got a peasant revolt on him? Ah, the bastard. Why, why would you get off this city? That is incredibly stupid. Um, well, that's that's what you just me to do. I did so not like, say unless that. I do something extremely stupid. Well, so I, I give him one more. Far be it from me. To... I hope this turns out like one of those things where like the sprinter like celebrates too early and then trips and rolls. That would be ironic. <laughs> Let's see if he summons something to give me a last stand. Nope. I think he's just faced out. Bumper crops. All right, all right, I'll go in for it. Finish it. All right, so that's it. Tournament yeah. one, round, tournament two, round one. And, goes and to Maximus. The Green Dragon Maximus wins the round. All right, so you will go on to the next round where I don't know who you fight. Um, but good job. That's going to be it for the stream tonight, actually. Um, yes, uh, Chris, just so you know... Um, the same side, like the same starting position won three times in a row for this game. Uh, Colgan is arguing over in chat that he won uh, with the other starting position when he was practicing with Merlin. So that may be okay. that may be a that may be a thing. We will see. We have uh, no less than 15 more sets of three games. So we will have some incredibly good data at the end of that for for whether or not Zengmar is is weighted incorrectly. So we'll we'll see. Um.
All, All right. right, we're done here. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to quit Enjoy streaming. It. And we'll Thanks, see you Chris. in the next round, Max. Thanks, Buka right. Studios. Thanks, Kevin.